Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com and this video is gonna be a little bit different than a lot of the videos that I make and this video, it's not going to be flashy, there's gonna not be that many edits and I am just gonna document and talk about my journey to my first $1 million in the last two and a half years. And because this video will be more for developers, because this is the developer channel, Clever Programmer, I am gonna talk about things that can potentially help you and maybe it can help you on your journey or you can have a similar pattern. But really this video is just for the older me. So if there's an older me out there who has the same type of dreams, the same type of, of ambitions, my goal is just to kind of make this a message for him or her. So I hope you enjoy it. I've put together an incredible training for you that'll help you become a six-figure developer. So you can earn the income you want, you can have the time, money, and the freedom, and the impact that you want to have in this world. The link is below. Click on the link. It'll take you to the training. Just put in your email. I'll send you this master class. It's three-part series. It'll absolutely blow your mind. Completely free. Go there, do it now, and I'll see you on the other side. Kind of get into this video. And there are a few important concepts that I'm gonna be talking about along this. I'm probably gonna be talking about the concept of like time arbitrage. I'm gonna be talking about like value versus money and skills and probably many other things. Uh, more, the big thing is I'm gonna really free flow this and yeah, just talk through kind of like I'm talking to another, another person. So let's just kind of get started. 2014 is when I actually started coding. So I'm gonna put that as started. These are the years 2017 through 2019 where I generated a million plus dollars, my first one million, and I've documented this entire series that I'll put out at some point on my personal brand. This is that, but this part of it, starting from 2014, was pivotal because if this didn't happen, then this wouldn't have happened. In this year, from coding, I didn't really earn an income. Like 2014, mostly I didn't earn that much income. I just learned how to code. I did know principles of freelancing, because I was an uh, in, instructor, like a chess instructor, and then I would go and teach people how to play chess, and then I would charge for that. And so people were paying me, you know, anywhere from $35 an hour to $150 an hour to teach them chess. I'm about 2,000 USCF rated um, as a chess player, but so it, it basically means like I'm a good chess player, not the best chess player, because best players are around 2,500, 2,600. But I developed the skill of freelancing in my earlier years. So for me, that was really, really important. So, you know, freelancing, I'll write that here. That was a really important skill that I actually started developing way before 2014. I, I was developing the skill of freelancing from really 2011 to 2014. So I had lots of experience freelancing. I never did a full-time job a single time in my life. I actually instead just did chess and taught chess as an instructor. And I've worked as an independent contractor forever. So whether it was I was doing one-on-one -on -one lessons or I was teaching a classroom full of kids, it was always as a freelancer, independent contractor. Okay, so I started coding here. 2015 was, I'll just map out the years. So for example, 2015, I made roughly 80K, 80K. So that was $80,000 in one year, 2015. Uh, 2016, I made 104,000 and some change, 2016 from coding but I will just around, I'll just say 100K. And then I started my business of Clever Programmer at the end of 2016 and 2017 to 2019, currently my focus is just Clever Programmer and nothing else. So I'm, my goal is to just help developers now primarily. I don't do any freelancing. I don't uh, teach coding anymore. I don't have time for any of that. I just have time to dedicate to this business to help people become developers. So after 2015, 2016, I basically realized, hey, like it's cool that I'm making 100K, it's really awesome. But even if I worked harder and became more incredible, I would maybe get to 200K a year after many, many years, and then I would get to like 300K, and that kind of would be the extent of that, maybe max. And 
I realized, okay, I could actually make a lot more income if I started a business and help other people because it just makes sense. For example, by myself, I can only change the life of myself and that's one person. But through the scale of the internet, I could potentially change the lives or help tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people on their journey. So if I could help hundreds of thousands of people on their journey, well then that means that my income would likely increase more than $100,000 a year. And because I'm also helping other people increase their income. So it's beneficial for everybody. The impact is much bigger, so the income is much bigger. 2017 was my first year in business and I did 211K. Uh, 2018 was, um, I think somewhere like 350K. And then 2019, we're already at 350K and it's September, so we have a few more months to go. So we're projected to probably do maybe 400 or something like that, you know, projection. So I'll just say like 400K and I'll leave it at that. So if you map out this, these are the two and a half years, more than one million was generated within, I don't know if you can see this or not very clearly, but I'm just, I'm trying my best here. But yeah, more like about $1 million was generated around this period. And sure you can add this too. So all of this is from coding. Yeah, now I'm pretty much gonna just talk about like what I did every year. 2014 for me was all about just increasing my skill set, like in coding. That was it. So 2014, I remember that I, 2014, I actually got started 2014 or right around, I believe August. August 10th was the day I committed to coding. That was the day. I started with my best friend Tenzin and Tenzin and I just started coding right around that time. I think he, I convinced him, his channel's called What's Dev, and I convinced him uh, to quit his job at CVS like a month later, and then he started coding with me. So then we were both doing it at the same time. I don't, I owe a lot to him because I don't think I would have continued coding if I didn't have another person there with me, so it was awesome, and we just, kind of went hard at it. So this Tenzin and I just learning coding for about like 15 to 18 hours a day. So let's see here about, let's just average it out to 16 hours per day coding. Um, now there were a lot of things that I wouldn't recommend a person does, such as like really eating unhealthy foods, and you know, not really taking the best care of yourself, having monster energy drinks all the time, la malnutrition, lack of sleep. So that's not good. Like you'd probably wanna avoid all of those things, but you know, we, we didn't, we just, all we did was code. So we wanted to get that skill set. Like I understood how important it was to get this skill set. It was more important than anything. I knew that money followed value. And I started to understand this concept around like 2014-ish. I started reading Audible. I listened to John Sonmez's book that was really, really valuable for me. So I'll, I'll point out the key things for me in my early year. Well, actually, I don't think I read that till later. When I started coding, I, yeah, I didn't even know who John Sonmez was actually. I, I found out about him later. So I'm not gonna write about that right this second. We'll come later. So 2014 it was about 16 hours of coding. I went to a place called PS1 in Chicago and that's where I would code. It was a co-working space and I along with Tenzin would code. I actually, we started in the basement of my house and in the basement of my house we would code every day, every single day. And I would code every single day. And I remember I learned about you know, command line and got really good at it. Command line is a really amazing skill to have that just a lot of developers try to avoid and then they get screwed over later. So they try to use everything with the GUI. They'll try to learn like Git from the GUI and they'll learn all these things from like everything that are like opening up desktops and putting things into it with their mouse. And what ends up happening is that they lack the skill of command line and then it comes to bite you in the ass a lot later. So you probably wanna avoid, you wanna avoid that. You want to work on 
the skills that really, really will help you. And these types of skills like command line, there's no such thing as instant gratification. It's brutal, it's painful, it's not fun, it's not fun to look at. There's just no satisfaction you get out of it besides just feeling like an elitist. That's the only satisfaction that I got out of it when I was doing it. I just felt like an elitist and I thought, well, this makes me really fucking cool and probably nobody else is doing it. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Command line was a pretty important skill I learned. I learned obviously the Python skills. So I, all I did was Python. I was taking courses on Coursera, Udacity, Team Treehouse, edX, um, CS50. I mean, I was just taking all of the courses that you could imagine. And then I was just completing a lot of them back to back to back to back. The courses that helped me the most was Coursera had intro interactive, intro to interactive programming with Python, something like IIPP, intro to interactive programming with Python. Yeah, so it was IIPP. So there was a course by Coursera, IIPP one, then there was part two, and then there was principles of computing part one, and then there was principles of computing part two. So these where this was intermediate, this was more beginner, but I mean, it gets pretty advanced. You're building a lot of different things. So it was, an, it was honestly like my curiosity for coding, my love for it, how fascinating I found the concepts. I mean, it was really, really intriguing to me, you know, le learning about the bino uh, what is it, binomial theorem. I don't do a lot with it anymore, but when I learned about it, it blew my mind. I just found it fascinating, so I kept I just kept doing more and more of it. And picked up this skill set of code, like problem solving really well, because I was just spending a lot of time around it. I learned recursion. The other important things that I learned, because I ended up picking up the command line, I learned Git versus GitHub fairly quickly. So that was another really important skill for me to have under my belt. It played out in my favor hugely because this is where recruiters are looking and most people don't think about that skill for a really long time. And I just start working on it pretty much right away. Some tips I will give you from my learnings were that when I was coding, the thing that helped me really improve my skill set was I didn't just follow the tutorials, I would go off and I would do my own thing. For example, if the tutorial was tic-tac-toe or rock, paper, scissors or something, I would follow it to a certain extent and then I would turn it into a completely different game. I would take it from rock, paper, scissors to I would turn it into rock, scissors, pa papers, lizard, Spock. Or I would take that same rock, paper, scissors that I was taught how to make on Python and then try to host it online. So there were a lot of different things that I would try to do and that really, really helped. 2014, I didn't spend any time learning web development. I didn't spend any time learning. Like, I think it's also really important to talk about what I didn't do because people try to do too much. My friend Tenzin, the problem that kept happening with him for a while before this was that he had known about coding way before I ever did. So he knew about coding when he was like, 10 or 11 years old and he was making websites in HTML and CSS and all this. And I actually found out more about coding in the start from him than he did from me because he knew more about it in the start. And when he was 11, 12, 13, like he would keep building up websites or following tutorials on Team Treehouse, things like that. But then as time progressed, he would go through the tutorial, then not do anything after, then come back, then go through the tutorial, then come back, then go through the tutorial, then come back. He would have a lot of time in between, the time he would take off from coding. So it was almost like he would work really hard to build this wall and then he would leave and during a bad season or war or whatever, the wall would break down and then he would be like, damn. And then he would come back after months to build up the wall. That's all that kept happening. And that's what's known as tutorial purgatory. And a lot of people fall victim to that. And they allow tutorial purgatory to really control um, major aspects of their lives and affect them in horrible, horrible ways. But the one thing that uh, was good that I was doing was I just never picked my head up. Like I just kept my head down and I just kept going. So it was Python and I just didn't do anything else. So I didn't do HTML, all right? I didn't do CSS. I didn't do JavaScript. I didn't do Java. I didn't just keep doing tutorial after tutorial and then 
just keep starting from scratch. I just kept moving forward. So I just stuck to one thing. It, now it doesn't matter. You can pick Python, you can pick Java, you can pick JavaScript, it really doesn't matter. But just pick one thing and then just do it. And then just don't stop forever. That's how you get good. Because getting good is a very weird, if there was a curve for getting good and you had like, it, it's kind of a really shitty feeling because if you started, you don't just, let me make it with a different marker so you can see what the line looks like. But getting good is a really weird curve. Kind of looks like this. Whatever you're doing just doesn't make any difference at all. So it just keeps going straight, 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 straight. And then it starts to build on top of itself, on top of itself, on top of itself. And then you just start getting exponentially better and better and better every single day. And then you start to plateau. And, and then you have very small increase forever. This is the area that people just give up on. So people will quit here in their coding journey. They'll quit here, they'll quit here, they'll quit here, they'll quit here. Hell, they might even quit here. But then when you're on this curve and you get past, you get past it, you're never coming back. You're so high up on this hill, you can't even see down here. So you don't even remember what it feels like to be in tutorial purgatory or whatever. And so what happens to most people is they'll start programming and they'll quit. Start, quit, start, quit, start, quit, start, quit, quit after tutorials and whatever. And that's why they're always stuck here and they keep changing things. They're like, I'm gonna learn web development. Then they're like, I'm gonna learn this language. Then they're like, what other is the top four programming languages? Okay, I'll learn this. You have to understand that when I started learning Python, it wasn't popular. It wasn't that popular. Now it's the number one programming language in the world. It destroys everything. It shits on JavaScript, Java, anything, right? Um, you, it's simple. Just look at the PyPal index, pop, popularity of a programming language. Look at Google Trends and it just dominates. Here's another simple test. Go to YouTube, just type in Python and look at the top videos and the views. It'll be like 8 million, 10 million. Look at JavaScript, it'll be like 1 million. Look at Java, it'll be like less than 1 million, 1 million. So certain things are really basic to understand and that's how you'll understand like what thing is popular and what not. But when I started, it wasn't the most popular. Other languages are, were much more popular. And I just, I actually picked it because I felt like nobody would know about it. I never heard the name Python. I heard people talk about Java. I heard people talk about JavaScript and all this other crap, but I never heard anybody talk about Python. So I thought that's why I should pick it because I am a contrarian and I love doing the thing that other people aren't doing because contradiction is where the genius is. Contradiction is where Einstein lived and contradiction is where Warren Buffett lived and contradiction is where Steve Jobs lived and contradiction is just where the genius is. So you wanna, you go with average, you'll get average results. And so don't go with average. Anyways, so it was really important what I didn't do that I think is really important to highlight and I just kept making consistent progress. So like I went from projects, projects, then more advanced classes, more advanced classes, and then I just taught myself almost all of the coding and then I did a lot of it on my own by doing my own projects and things like that. That was about 2014. Honestly, that was also a lot of 2015 what I did because I just understood how important the skill set was. And, the re and then I just went all in because if I pick up this skill, then I knew, I knew money followed value. And so if I picked up this skill, then I just knew that money would come along with it at some point because that's just how money works. Money is not this weird static thing that most people think about and they take it and just sit on it with their ass and they hold it close to their chest and they're scared to spend it on learning new things, but they're very okay with spending it on things that give them instant gratification. So most people will, you know, nobody thinks buying a laptop or TV is a scam because instant gratification, right? You buy it and you have it but most people have a lot of trouble spending money for education or training or um, whatever gives them benefits in the long term because, well, that's a scam because you're not getting anything immediately. And when people don't get anything immediately, their little brains get very hurt and they feel weird about it, right? So what I was doing in a lot of the 2014, 2015 was I learned that, okay, if I'm making money from chess and say I was making 35 to $50 an hour, 
And if coding was a higher paying skill set than chess, so if I understood that coding is gonna be greater than chess, like money wise, right? Dollar wise and opportunity wise and things like that, the need for it, I mean, chess is a hobby. Coding is something that the world depends on. There's a big difference. Well then, I thought, okay, how many times is it better? And I would say that it's almost five to 10 times better, the opportunity for coding. Well, if the opportunity is five to 10 times better, then if I'm making um, $150 or, or let's not even say 150, let's just say if I was making $50 for a chess coaching session for an hour of my time, well, that $50 in the coding world is worth a lot more in the long run. It's either worth, it's worth somewhere like 300 to $500. And the reason I say that is because there's no chess job you can do full time. There's no chess job you can do 20 hours a week, but there are coding jobs that you can do 20, 40 hours a week. So even, even though it doesn't mean that I'll be making $500 an hour from coding, it just does mean that over the course of a week, I would make a lot more income and I would help a lot more, more people from coding than I would a chess, right? So then I learned, so then I thought, okay, these $50 are actually either less than or equal to coding like $500, okay? So once I, so once I made this conclusion, I thought, okay, well, all I need to do is trade my chess skill for coding skill, that's really it. So if I could trade my chess skill for coding skill, then I would go really, really far. And I thought, okay, what's the best way to do that? So obviously there are free courses and that's helpful, but I mean, think about any Olympic athlete, right? That you know of the best in the world. None of them became the best in the world by taking courses and learning by themselves. Most of them became Olympic level athletes because they have coaching every day. The best students that you can think about in, you know, who are killing it in all their exams and everything, they have tutoring every day. So I understood that I would need mentoring and I understood that I would need it pretty consistently. So I thought, okay, well, what I can do is I can pay, let me clean up some part of the board. I thought, okay, what I can actually do is I can, I can pay a coding mentor $50 an hour and learn coding. So any money that I was actually making from my chess, I thought, well, I could just reinvest it into coding. The arbitrage is huge because I'm spending $50, that's almost equal to $500 in the long run because I'm trading my chess skill set for the coding skill set. So I'm paying 50, I'm learning from somebody who has 10 years of experience in the software development world because I would go to a platform like codementor.io or something like that. And this video is not sponsored by them or whatever. And I would just pay a mentor. So I thought, okay, if I paid a mentor $50 an hour from my chess and I learned coding is essentially like I was just trading chess for coding for almost an equal price except I know that the value of coding and the opportunity for coding is 10 times more. So I'm just trading in one skill set for another, right? You could do the same thing. For example, if you're driving an Uber right now, or you drive a truck right now, or you are doing an um, IT desk job, well, think about it, right? If you're doing an IT job, maybe you're making $15 an hour, and pretty soon you're gonna be replaced because it's a mindless job. And so you're not, you're not bringing that much value to the world. So uh, AI is gonna replace you and then you're gonna be making zero dollars. So think about how much coding, like how much opportunity there is for coding versus Uber. So let's just say you drive an Uber, right? So you, let's say that there's coding on this hand and I'm gonna make the claim that coding opportunity is more than Uber driving opportunity because they're already coming out with self-driving cars. Five years, 10 years from now, there are gonna be no drivers, okay? But most people like want instant gratification. That's another thing I wanna talk about. Now, if you're driving an Uber and you wanna become a developer, that's, a pretty stupid thing to do because think about it. This is a $10 an hour skill set. So $10 an hour skill set, let's say. You're driving people around, doesn't require any skill. You, any, almost anybody can drive. As long as you have arms and legs, you can drive. You know, versus coding. I would argue, like how many times 
more opportunity is there. Don't think in terms of, don't even think in terms of dollars. Think in terms of how much more opportunity there is for coding, right? So let's say if this is like opportunity and let's just say this is a one in opportunity. How many times more is the opportunity for coding, especially as we head into the future versus Uber? I would argue that it's probably 50 to 100 times more opportunity. And when I say opportunity, I mean like not just how many available jobs there are because there are a lot of probably a lot of jobs available for Uber. Everybody can get one job from Uber. But what I mean is that one, how much income, then two, the how long you will be satisfied doing this versus Uber. I mean, I will shoot myself if I did Uber for like a week. Now imagine doing it for years, right? That gets very crazy very quickly. So there is less satisfaction. But then outside of that, you're not increasing your income. And what other things is it gonna help you in life? It's not gonna help you in business later. It's not gonna help you if you wanna get a really big promotion. It's not gonna help you if you wanna become a manager at some company. It's not gonna help you with creating some kind of startup. It's not gonna help you building passive income. It just fits in with no goal. Whereas coding can fit in later with you wanting to start a business. It fits in with you doing something even completely different from coding. And then the opportunity for coding and developers is growing as well because all the artificial intelligence and all of that will require people to program it. And then maybe we can argue that 100 years from now it wouldn't need developers. But you know, I'm fine with 100 years because then I'll be dead and then it doesn't matter anymore. So. I would say that the opportunity for coding is a hundred times more. Why is somebody spending time here? That's a big mistake, big mistake people make. And that's why they don't get good because they're thinking in terms of very, 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 very short term. I, I want to talk about the concept of, um, I'm going to write this down here. It's pretty important. Not every dollar is equal. So not every dollar is equal. What the hell does that mean? Well, that means that making $10 an hour from Uber versus making $10 an hour from coding to most people that actually looks the same, but it's the same if you look in the short term value of it. Okay. Here's another way to think about it. You can have 3000 calories a day from Coca-Cola, or you can have $3,000, uh, 3000 calories from broccoli. Okay. It's the same number of calories, but one will ruin your fucking life. And the other one will put you in a pretty great trajectory for your overall health and life. Okay. Most people don't understand this concept. So your time needs to go in the thing that's really, really valuable. If you're spending your time in Uber making short term money and your goal is to do something with code, like you have ambitions and you have dreams, you're doing something horribly wrong. You need to get smarter about it. Um, most people talk about hustle and stuff like that. And that's great. But if you're hustling, like you're a janitor on the side, and you're a server on the side and your goal is to is very ambitious, then you're not being really smart about how you're going about it because there are opportunities that exist in coding that you can get paid for today or tomorrow, not as much as you'd like, but you'd be making some amount of income, even though it might be less than what you'd be making with Uber right now. So with the difference of this being one in a hundred, almost a hundred times, what this basically means, right, is, is that if you're making $10, $10 from coding is greater than $10 from Uber. Okay. Almost 10 to a hundred times more greater. We're talking about a lifelong trajectory. Okay. If we have a lifelong trajectory of, if I, if I create a graph, another graph and on this graph uh, purple will be uber and then we'll have coding as orange here's a long-term opportunity and graph that looks like so for uber it looks kind of like this right there's a lot of opportunity right now so it might so it kind of looks like this but the opportunity is on the decline so it'll be it's kind of like this and say this is year zero and say this is year like 10, 10 years from now. And we're talking about opportunity as a driver, not the company Uber itself. The opportunity for coding kind of starts off from a similar place, except what starts to happen is it goes like this, 
because as many Uber jobs are losing, you're getting more developer jobs because they need to create automated Ubers to get you fired from your current Uber job. <laughs> and uh, you're probably not driving an Uber. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just saying that to get a point across, okay? It just means like, in general, what are we doing with our time? And we just have to be sometimes very critical about it or we just need somebody to call us out on it because not all the time are we investing our time into the best things. All right, anyways, so you have the curve of coding here. The opportunity for coding is infinitely greater, right? So the time you're investing into coding now, it's compounding. You're building up the skills, compounding, compounding, compounding. Eventually, you'll start to approach zero with Uber and you'll start to approach much more with coding. And so I will argue that it's even more than 100 times. In, the, in a 10 year span. If you look at 10 year spans, it's probably even more than 100. So $10 in Uber, to so $10 in coding is actually greater than $10 in Uber, and it's almost greater by a factor of 100. So meaning that even if you were making $100 an hour from Uber right now, the $10 an hour from coding would actually be greater. Okay, this is the same concept uh, you apply to business as well. For example, I always tell people the thousand dollars you can earn from an online business is probably equal to like ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars that you actually earn from working a job because the online business that you have is infinitely scalable, right? You see 211, then 350, then 400k, and I don't know, maybe I'll be out of business tomorrow or something. We'll find out or maybe next year I'll hit 600K or 700K and then maybe in a few years I'll hit a million dollars a year or more. So it just, it depends or maybe I will not have a business or not have anything. So we don't know how it gets played out but I did believe that the dollars were worth way more from business than they are from my job. So for example, late 2016, when I made my first $47 from an online business, I lost my mind. I went crazy. I went bananas. And everybody around me, including my family, they were like, oh, you made $40? That's okay. That's cute. Okay. Nice. Good job. Good job. And then I thought, I'm like, they, they just don't understand what the vision is. And that $47 that everybody was like giving me little pats on the back, they're like, good job, little buddy. That became $211,000 the first year, 2017. And all of them, it was more income than almost everybody around me was making at the time. And then it wasn't cute baby numbers anymore. And then it became really big. And so it just keeps getting magnified. These are still nothing like, these are not no numbers in the in the long scheme of things. This is very little like this might not even be the business that I'm running a few years from now or uh, who knows. But the skills that I'm learning, I get to keep them forever. Right. So another thing that I want you to think about is if things if here's another way to look at it. OK, to judge somebody's character. Here's how I look at it. If you just strip them completely naked, you take everything from them, their computer, their mic, their lights, their whiteboards, their home. Um, their car, their clothes, every single thing. If you take away every single thing, what are the things they have in that scenario? That's that person's worth. So if you don't have anything with you, do you still have the skill of being able to play the guitar and it's embedded inside of you and nobody can take that away from you? Incredible. Do you have the skill of being a runner? Do you have the skill of coding that nobody can take away from you, right? Unless they stab your brain or they take fragments of your brain out and give you memory loss or memory damage, if they can't take that away from you, that's a skill that you have. The more skills you have that are strategic to the goal that you're trying to achieve, that are focused, you will just become exponentially better in the long run at that thing. And this determines your character. This will also determine your income. Who are the people that are getting paid the most? For example, most people aren't even good at one thing. That's why they make 10, $15 an hour. The jobs that they can get is either flipping burgers, uh, becoming a server, driving an Uber, because they're just not good at anything that people are actually paying for. They're not incredible at it, or they didn't decide strategically on what things to be good at. For example, if somebody became pretty damn good at guitar. Well, you have to be insanely good at guitar to be able to make a lot of money from it. So 
it might be a good thing, but that's not necessarily related to making an income. I didn't become good at coding because it was so enjoyable and like I didn't enjoy it more than chess when I started. I didn't enjoy it more than soccer, but I just knew that soccer would be a much more difficult path. And I don't know, some people are awesome and crazy enough to follow it, but if you're not gonna follow it like an extreme, which most people don't, they kind of half ass the things, well then you're gonna be like very average, right? So you wanna spend time into the thing that's gonna really make you grow over the period of long term. And those are the skills you keep. So you really, really want to work on your skills, developing your skills. Even with my team, the people that are on my team are incredible people. Like for example, uh, Aaron, who's on our team. So he has a skill set of being a developer. That's pretty cool. Well, then he also has a skill set to speak on camera. That's pretty cool in itself, but then you combine the both, that's really powerful. Then he has a skill set of being able to teach people and empathize. Well, that's pretty cool on its own, but if you combine those all skills together, that's really powerful. And now most companies would want to hire him because they'll find out about him from the internet. And then he's very empathetic and a person who should be working on people's teams. And then he also can code and has a very um, amazing skill set in that. Well, then that's really hireable and that's really desirable. But then you keep building other skills on top of that. Like he can do video editing really well and he can do content creation really well and he can create projects really well and he can potentially work with clients or people really well. And so you start to stack them up and now it's, it's a pretty irreplaceable skill. Whereas you have most people in life who are barely good at one thing, much less at multiple different things. And these are skills that when somebody stripped naked, they still have them. So what I mean by that is if you were to lose everything, you can recreate all of this because it's built from skills that you have inside of you. So this is why if you're spending time into Uber for short term cash, you're just gonna get destroyed. You're gonna get destroyed by people who are much more intelligent, who are investing their time. This is how compound interest works. This is why compound interest is such a powerful force. It's a exponential curve. The more time that gets, the money gets left into a certain stock or whatever, it starts to grow and compounds like insane. And that's why it becomes so much by the time you're 65. Well, the same thing happens with skill sets. You can, you can go in, you know, I learned this concept from Sam Ovens, which is pretty awesome. You can, dev you can get good at like 100 different random things and that's pretty cool. It's like really cool. Or you could just get good at one thing and then just be like, boom, right? And you will, and this is not just one thing. This is like skills that are, you're building skills strategically in a similar thing. For example, I'm pretty good at soccer. I'm pretty good at pool and bowling and juggling and all this other random stuff but that doesn't help me. That's more like this, this, and this. But then when I'm good at coding and I'm good at teaching and then I'm good at camera and then I'm good at like video edit, like all, and then it, it starts to stack up and then go in like one laser line, right? And then it becomes really exponential and then your income follows that curve. And then it hopefully permanently follows that curve. These are really important things to understand because if you don't understand this, somebody else will understand it and then they will have the tactical advantage in life and then you won't. So that's why you want to really understand these concepts and internalize them and just understand that ten, and not every dollar is equal and $10 an hour becoming a, being a server is way less than that $10 an hour from coding. So what you wanna do is have such a strong compass that you know that if you're making $10, somebody would literally need to be paying you $10,000 or $1,000 an hour driving Uber for you to accept that. That's how you should look at it. That's really how you should look at it, okay? so. These $10 are greater than these $100. These $10 are greater or equal to the $1,000 an hour from Uber. Okay, so I'll do this. And this is why you wanna just spend all of your time into this thing. So now once you understand this, another thing that you can understand is, okay, if I'm even making $5 or $8 an hour from coding and I can just barely make my ends meet somehow, that's really worth it. And I should just keep figuring out how to invest more time into coding. 
The biggest thing that helped me was I just figured out the secret to investing all of my time into coding. And for me, that was this thing that's really important to my life, my journey and all of that, that I dedicate a lot of it to is just tutoring. Okay, tutoring slash mentoring. And what I was able to achieve from tutoring and mentoring is I was able to replace so I started making about $35 an hour teaching coding as early as like three months into my coding experience because well, if I'm three months in, by default, majority of the world is behind me because majority of the world has less than three months of experience coding and majority of the world are beginners. That's why all the beginner tutorials on YouTube get the most views, not the intermediate or the advanced. So I wanted to teach people who were just behind me. If somebody is even one step behind me in one thing, I'm qualified to teach. And I know this because of my years from 2011 all the way to 2014 from teaching chess to people. So when I started coaching people in coding and I started mentoring and tutoring, I was making 35 to $50 an hour. And once I was able to do that, well, what happened was I just crossed out chess. Remember, it's just as important what you're not doing as it is what you are doing. So I actually just kibosh the chest completely, right? Because if this is true, then I want to be spending all of my time coding because it's worth 10 times or 100 times more in the long run, right? So I started earning all my income from teaching people coding. And you know, again, I'm spending 18 hours, 16 hours a day. So my three months, four months will probably be somebody's years and years and years because I also never let off the gas. Most people, when they spend two years on something, it's like they spend a few hours a week and then they like skip in the middle and they fall off and then they'll like spend but if you just spend time on it like a maniac, a big chunk, and that's all you dream about, sleep about, talk about, it's all you do, then you, again, you, you grow exponentially. So once I started making 35 to $50 an hour from teaching coding, well, I was learning this new $500 an hour skill set in the long scheme of things, right? In, in the 10 year term thinking. And I thought I should be paying for this time from my own pocket, yet I was actually getting paid for it. That was the most unbelievable thing. And what that allowed me to do was now I was actually spending 100% of my time coding, all right? I, I made it so that 100% of my time, my working time was spent coding. I mean, obviously I was sleeping at some point, but besides that, all of my work was now coding. It wasn't, oh man, I'm just trying to like hustle and you know, I'm going to McDonald's, man, and I'm just trying to make the ends meet and then whatever time I have left when my energy is complete shit and I'm frustrated and I'm upset from doing this job that I know I shouldn't be doing and I come home with that low energy, speaking with my wife and my children and being frustrated with them and taking out my anger issues with them, with that little energy that I have left, the 30 minutes or 20 minutes of anger and frustration, I try to work on my dreams with that. I try to work on my coding with that. That's what most people do. And then they're frustrated, they become overweight, they become depressed, they don't become good at anything, and then it's a very, very miserable life. And instead, what you wanna do is you wanna be, you wanna respect your fucking dream. It's your dream, man. You said it's your dream. So then respect it then don't do the shitty job that you're doing right now. Like, don't do the side hustle that you're doing right now. Like, quit it and then start making income from this or start making income from this and then just quit that because you're spending your waking hours, your most active hours, your most alert hours on the thing that's not your dream. So then you're not, you're just not gonna have the life that you want. The, you're not designing the life to suit you in what it is that you want. So you wanna quit that. I quit chess, I quit whatever else I was doing. I quit it. I was trying to start a chess business too. I have a YouTube channel called Chestastic. I quit that. And I just focused on coding and that's all I did. Then when my skill set, so once I started coding with 100% of my time and my, I was now getting money from it too, well then what I kept doing was I kept realizing the following, okay? Here's another hack that I realized. This is pretty important to understand, so pay attention. So say I figured out how to charge 35 to $50 an hour to teach somebody coding because I had 
years and years, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, four or five years of experience freelancing, negotiating prices. I use that skill set to charge people $50 an hour for coding. Well, guess what? On platforms like CodeMentor.io and Outside World, there were developers who were saying that they would charge me $50 an hour for their time. So now think about this. I could trade. Now I had a new opportunity, an unbelievable opportunity. This is crazy. It blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Okay. Now what I was presented with was with an opportunity to trade my three months of experience. So I'll say like, you know, three months. Let me ask you this. If I gave you, if I said, give me $1 and then I will give you a hundred dollars back. Is that a good trade for you? Probably is, right? So I got to trade my three months of experience for some developer who had 10 years of experience. Now let's understand this. This is not, this is the same thing as flipping on eBay or flipping a home, uh, something in real estate. It's literally the same exact thing. I'm just flipping attention and time and money. This is the time arbitrage. I'm exchanging my three months of time for somebody's 10 years of time. This is a, a f- insane deal. How many months are in 10 years? Well, that's 12 months a year. So this is 120 months. Okay. So think about it. I'm trading in my three months for 120 months of experience. That's insanity. Okay. And what that allows me to do is quickly my, my, my fourth month will actually give me like five months of experience. You see what I'm saying? Because that tutor is now helping me accelerate to his level faster. So if I spend, so my fourth month will really be the equivalent of three months. So it'll put me at six months. The month after that would put me at like nine months. Follow? So if I'm trading my time, this is not a, it shouldn't be $50 an hour, but I should be paying this guy or gal. I was working with Jessamine Smith most of the times and then some other tutors too, other mentors too on Code Mentor and other platforms. But if I'm paying 50, well, this is 10, 20, 30, 40 times greater. So I should really be paying 40 times more than $50 an hour. I should be paying like my $50 an hour in this case should have been equal to what's 50 times times 40. Well, that's obviously 2000. So it should be 2000 or sorry, the other way should be the other way. So with this logic, I should be paying them 2000. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. So it's less confusing. So the deal that I was actually getting was my $50 for $2,000 in return. That's the, actual deal that I was getting here when I was having these people teach me because I would teach somebody coding. I would make $50. Then I would just come and have a session with them for $50. And so I kept $0 in my bank account, but in the long run, I knew I was just putting 2000 into my bank account, 2000 into my bank account over and over again because of the skill set I was learning. And I knew that with my negotiation skills and all of that, if I had their skill set, I would easily be charging five to 10 times more. So this was the deal that I was getting. This is a not an equal deal. This is a very unfair deal. And that's the deal that I was making. I was exchanging $50 to get $2,000 worth of value every session that I had of them mentoring me and giving me their experience. Because in the start, I'm not going to be making money from it. That's obvious to me. But a year or two years from that time, you bet then that, that I would then be making 100, 200, 300 dollars an hour. So it would take me about half a year to pay off all the money that I put into all of this stuff. And then six months after that, it would just be all profit. And then for the future and eternity, it would just be all profit. In 2015, I was able to make 80K from coding, from just teaching people coding. And when I had other developers teaching me, I was improving my skill set really, really fast. And I was also learning on my own too, obviously, because I was super interested. So, you know, I probably invested like 20K or or something like that into my own learning 20k or more 20k plus into my own learning online courses coding courses 
and then mentors. So I spend this, but then I made a lot. So not a bad deal. And primarily by teaching coding. Then if you fast forward to 2016, well then I got so good at that point that I picked up the skill of freelancing. And so I made most of my money from teaching people coding, about 70 to 80K. And then I picked up another 20 or 30K from freelancing. So I'm, I made about $104,000 in 2016 and that added 20 30k extra from this is from freelancing okay and then i got pretty good at freelancing because i understood how it worked and then i'm like okay next year i would crush it even more but then i thought but then around this time people were asking me a lot of questions how did i improve so fast how did i get here so fast my own teacher from my computer science class started asking me, hey, how did you improve your skills so fast? How did you do this? And he started asking me for career advice. And that's when I thought, okay, maybe it's a good time to not code anymore and actually teach people and help them with their own careers. And that's why I started the YouTube channel. And then what happened in 2017 through 2019 is all just helping developers. That's all. I, uh, so again, it's important what I'm not doing. What you have to understand when I started 2017, I actually gave up all of my clients. I was making about $10,000 a month and I just cut them all. I cut all of my clients. I got an office so I could have actually more expenses to deal with because I just knew I had to put myself against the wall and not give myself any chances out. I also didn't have any money saved up. I used up all my money to reinvest into my own self to learn the skills that I needed to learn. And then 2017, I just was, I thought, yeah, I don't want to, I just want to improve my business and I want to force myself to make all the income for my business, clever programmer. And then 2017, 2018, 2019, that was the only focus. So 2014 to pretty much 2016, only one focus, coding, nothing else. Code, improve the skill set. that's it, time arbitrage, you know, 100% time spent coding. These are the people people are not doing. That's why it takes them 20 years to get the same results. You know, the, the only way they can get the same results is if they have a job at Google or Facebook and you don't need that shit. Like, if you understand these principles, you know, I was reading lots of books, so I didn't mention that, but Audible was really helpful for me and I was listening to um, Rich Dad and Poor Dad. I listened to John Saunders' book, Soft Skills, that had a huge impact on my life, and 10X by Grant Cardone, and just lots of books that hearing them and reading them helped change my life and changed the way I thought completely. Then, once my thoughts changed, then my actions followed, and then after my actions followed, the re results came after a while, right? Each of them is a uh, thought is a leading indicator and then everything else is a lagging indicator. You know, what, what does the leading and lagging mean? You keep working out for a long time, the act of working out is a leading indicator and then the body changing is the lagging indicator. So thoughts are the leading indicator. Once your thoughts starts to change, well then that's the leading indicator. Once that happens, the lagging indicators are that your actions start to change and then even more of a lagging indicator after that are the results. Then results start to come up after a while. But all of the things that are really beneficial for you have very slow long-term impacts and they're, they're, there's only long-term gratification. There's no instant gratification, which is why most people aren't good at it because humans are designed for instant gratification. And most people focus on just instant gratification. And if you do that, well, you're not gonna get most things that are amazing for you, like your body transforming into the body of your dreams, long term uh, your relationship turning into the relationship of your dreams long term your business turning into the business you want long term okay this is very long term i mean this might seem very small to you but this is a six year one two three four five six it's a bit six years long transformation and progression i went from being really weak and skinny i transformed a lot of my own body i mean i was scrawny weak kid who couldn't do anything and I transformed my body a lot in this time. I transformed my social skills a lot in this time. I learned how to socialize. I learned how to have girlfriends. I learned how to um, become a better developer. I learned how to become a better businessman. I learned how to become a better copywriter, a better video editor, a better storyteller, a better content creator, You know, a better programmer, a better developer, a better freelancer, better at managing people, better at building culture, better at reading books. So all of these skills that start to stack up, you know, my whole life just was designed around that. And I sacrificed a lot of things, but then it just made me better. And now I've, 
I have, you know, I'm still not where I need to be, but I feel like I have an amazing relationship. I am currently working on my body goals and being a lot more consistent. Consistency is one of my weaknesses, so I'm working on that and I'm asking for help a lot. And then I'm just focusing on my business and improving that. And this is a long-term game, right? Most people give up and you just keep going. So learn coding business, okay? Six year long transformation. It takes a long time, it's really hard. It requires you to really enjoy it. But if you start focusing and feeding your brain the right things, then you're gonna be on the right track. So you gotta get out of your comfort zone and you have to, you know, the reason why I developed social skills was so I could be better at confrontations. Why should I be better at confrontations? Well, whenever you're having a discussion around negotiation, most people are just pussies and they wanna get, uh, they don't understand that they could spend either 10 years coding uh, and building more experience to ask for a raise or just withstand the pressure and the awkwardness in the 20 minute meeting to negotiate a higher rate. Most people don't understand that. And those 20 minutes can give you 10 years of results. So while hustle is very important, if you're not very strategic and you're not thinking, well then you're gonna screw yourself over in the long run, right? In that same negotiation, you could be charging $30 an hour or you could be charging $60 an hour, but it requires you to be a lot more confrontational. It requires you to sit through the pressure and most people are soft, they're weak, they're weak-minded, they're weak-spirited, they're fearful, they're frightened, they don't wanna stand out. Most developers, there's most developers. So there's a high chance, high probability that this describes you. Your, uh, you know, most developers are introverted and they just don't take the time to work on their weaknesses. And I just don't think people understand that. Like it was very, very, very awkward, difficult, for me to work on my you know soft skills so i'm gonna write that here so a big thing that this is attributed to is soft skills all right now the word soft is here but don't let that trick you because it's actually very difficult to get these soft skills and soft skills i attribute a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of the success to almost every part of the success I attribute to this, okay? First of all, I was freelancing since 2011, 2010. That automatically helped me work on a lot of my soft skills. But then what I realized was I could never charge more than 35 or 50, or like $35 an hour until like 2013 or something. And that's the time where I started having this really uncomfortable discussion with my boss. And many times we had the discussion and then he actually told me that he would not allow me to uh, increase to like $75 an hour and I even started making videos for him for the, you know I'm like I have this idea the channel for this company is gonna be incredible and I'm not gonna say the name of the company because I respect them and they did give me an opportunity when I needed it so I'm like you know I have this idea like let me help make the videos chess videos for you you know the schools that I'm at it increased by like 40%, 50%, the, the amount of kids that are coming in. So I know you're making a lot of good income on that and I'm just asking for a tiny fraction of it, but I'll just keep improving my skill set. I'll make videos for you guys. I'll do more promotional stuff for you guys. And after many different conversations, he told me no. And that was very uncomfortable. That was hard. I had to open myself up to rejection. And then I didn't stop there. I was like, he can go fuck himself. And then I went and applied to other jobs and then I negotiated starting from 50 or $60 an hour and then I got those jobs and then once I got those jobs I told him hey I got two more jobs so I'm gonna be leaving this because I asked you to pay me more I deserve more I am more qualified I put in the work I put in the effort I have a lot of integrity honor I showed up on time I did all the things that I was supposed to do but you aren't paying me higher so I'm gonna leave and then he said, no, 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 okay, I'll pay you $60. So now I have three jobs paying me 50 to $60 an hour. That came from a lot of self-esteem, a lot of pushing myself, a lot of being uncomfortable, doing the things that I didn't wanna do and having confrontations that I did not want to have. That's not easy. That's really hard. That's harder than most other things because when people try to confront, it literally feels like death to you, You've, part of your body feels like you're gonna die. So that, other things I would do is like, I would go to a Woodfield mall and I would force myself to talk to people. 
and I would go with my friend Tenzin as well, and we would force ourselves to talk to random strangers and have conversations. And if it's a group of five people or eight people or 10 people, and just you probably listening to it are cringing right now. And the amount of cringing you're doing right now tells me exactly what I need to know about your own soft skills. Because the more you're cringing right now, it's more likely that your soft skills are actually weaker and you're more uncomfortable. And so use this metric, like imagine you were going to talk to strangers and if you're feeling some kind of like restriction, that's exactly actually what's stopping you from doing a lot of things that require confrontation, okay? So we put ourselves through hell. We would go to Woodfield Mall every day for 10 to 12 hours a day to talk to strangers because we knew we needed to work on our soft skills. Sometimes we would spend 12 hours not talk to a single stranger and we would be driving home and we would contemplate suicide. Like we would hate our fucking lives, we would be depressed. I would come home and I would cry at times and so did my friend but we did it every day almost anyway to develop the muscle and skill set. And then eventually we would just be talking to like random people and whether it was we were getting into a confrontation or just talking to them or told them that they look nice or what, whatever it was, we would just do it. And then we trained our muscle and brain to keep doing this. And then I started having less and less of a problem asking for more because you only get what you ask for and you'll never get what you don't ask for. It's just a simple rule of life. Like all the people who cry to me and they're like, you know, I was so great with my company and I did all the things and corporate screws you and corporate America just fucks you. And they're like, I spent 30 years and you know, they never really saw the gem that I was and all this, well, it's your fault. You should have asked for more. They're like, but you know, I didn't want to come off. I have integrity. They should have seen it. No, it's your fault. You should have asked for more and moved on. Same thing that happens to people in relationships. They're like, I don't, the other person doesn't see the gem that I am and the value that I bring and all of this and they treat me like shit and they abuse me and all this. It's your fault for being in the relationship. I'm never on the side of the person who's the victim. Like sometimes maybe, yeah, like if you're being bullied and stuff and you have no choice, sure. Like I understand how psychologically traumatizing it can be. I grew up in a religious school where I got the shit beaten out of me every single day. It was like physical and mental torture for four years every single day in a row from the age of nine to 13. I would come home with bruises and borderline broken elbows, but I couldn't tell my parents because then I would get beat up even more. So, I mean, I understand and I respect that, but when you're in that situation where you have a shitty relationship, where you have a shitty boss, it's your fault. They're not shitty. They were allowed to be shitty because of people who are sheeps, right? So this, when I say soft skills, it's not so soft. It, you, you can't read one book and it'll change you. This actually took years, like 24, I did this in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, like this was like five years long journey. And then what did this help me with? Well, what it helped me with was when I had to do a negotiation for $50 an hour for a freelancing client, I negotiated them to $100 an hour. Other things it helped me with, I had a chess client who was, I was gonna, they were gonna pay me $60 an hour and uh, I was like, either you pay me $150 an hour because I have to drive pretty far or just we just won't do it. They initially said, yeah, let's just not do it. But then eventually a week later, they came back and they said, okay, we'll pay you $150 an hour. And then they did it. And they just paid me $150 an hour and that was it. Um, in 2017, 2018, like when I had to charge for my course for a profitable programmer, I didn't act like a little fucking bitch and charge $10 like uh, most people do on Udemy because they're making bad courses and they're scared. They're also scared. So they charge $10 or $5. I don't care about that. I'm not scared. I have the best course. So then I will charge $500 for it and not feel bad and people will pay me and then we will give them the respect and integrity and everything they deserve and we will help them succeed to the best of our abilities. And we have a lot of clients and customers who are super incredibly happy, satisfied and getting amazing results. So then that's the thing, right? We'll do a great job, but then we'll also charge for it and then it won't be charity. And then it's just as simple as that. And that's just how life works. You just get what you ask. like. You literally just get what you ask for. Nobody has ever gotten stuff that they didn't ask for. Every single person who's on YouTube and has Patreons, they're not asking for anything and that's precisely why they're also just barely surviving. That's how most YouTube channels are working. And while it makes them feel great and they don't have strong enough soft skills to charge what they're worth, 
it's killing their overall business happiness it causes them to burn out they don't actually have a real business from it when it comes to freelancing most people don't have the soft skills to charge the price that they should be charging they're very very scared and so then you just always get the lower end of the stick in life when you don't demand excellence and you don't ask for bigger and better things in relationships money health and all of that okay so soft skills is a very 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 huge portion of it everybody has a different journey about how they actually go and do this but you actually have to do it you just have to put in the work books won't help you here you have to actually put in the action so um there's that and then you know other other things soft skills helped me with was when i started making deals with people to do affiliate partnerships with i was able to charge a lot of income for that okay affiliate partnerships are business partnerships okay that's what it helped with so yeah every every result like this wouldn't be 100k right now this would be 50k if i didn't have soft skills this wouldn't be 80k it would be about 40 or 30. so that's that's what it helped me with and if i didn't have those skills i wouldn't have this channel today they also helped me but like having confidence more confidence speaking to the camera speaking to people not having anxiety around it and then i know <laughs> you know so this is up to 2014 to 16. i don't really want to get too much into 2017 and 2019 because i feel like that starts to get out of people's brains really quickly especially on this channel because i realized that most people on this channel just want to do coding but again i said i'm making this video for my older self and my older self would probably appreciate this information so I'm gonna share that. So 2017, 2019, it was all about growing the YouTube channel, growing the audience around coding. And, and I think for somebody who's becoming a developer, like it's a pretty good track. You should be documenting your coding journey to build a personal brand around coding. I mean, everybody's doing it now. Joshua Fluke, you have like Coding Rice, and you have like all kinds of random channels, like everybody's doing it, right? Jarvis Johnson did it. A simple programmer who was one of the OGs around coding and building a personal brand around it. Um, traversing media, you know, like think about it. Like why is tech lead, uh, you know, wh why is he on, on YouTube, right? He's working at Facebook, so shouldn't he just like shut the fuck up and work there? And why, he was also working at Google, so why is he on YouTube? What, what is he doing on YouTube? Well, because there's much more money to make on YouTube and there's much more attention that you get on YouTube. That's why he's selling his course Interview Pro or something like that with Joma Tech. That's why Joma Tech is on YouTube. He's also in San Francisco and doing well. So why is he, like think about it, right? Why are people who are at the top doing this? Because well, personal brand around becoming a developer is actually insanely profitable. And it's a, and then also it gives you limitless job opportunities. So it's a good track to follow this, you know, increase your skill set and then build a brand around it. Like Stefan Mischuk is now doing it. I mean, just there's so many developers. I mean, it's almost like more developers are doing this now than than not doing it. You know, that's YouTube is becoming the default. And pretty soon everybody will catch on. So it's a good time for you to do it before everybody, every single developer catches on, you know, life of Luba and then some other kid just started the other day yeah there's just too many they're getting out of control forest knight i mean derek ba manas is one of the ogs uh, new boston was one of the ogs and then everybody just jumped on the bandwagon including me and then we just you know we we grew our platforms and i'm yeah so you know 2016 a uh, few months of it and 2017 it was like growing attention on YouTube and then selling a digital product you know growing attention on YouTube selling a digital product growing attention on YouTube selling a digital product so it's pretty like linear straightforward I mean this year we did learn a lot about Facebook ads and YouTube ads and then we grew the business from that and now the focus is primarily just to help developers become developers and then go on a similar path like pretty soon if there's a demand for it i will also be doc like i can also be making courses or some kind of guidance on this path of 2017 18 and 19 and then um how i actually grew the business around it so quickly and then generated an income because sure everybody has a youtube channel but like i have very difficult time believing that m most developers on that have a YouTube channel are generating in this amount of range maybe but you need a real business not you know you need a real real business where you have real customers who are actually satisfied clients okay 
you can't grow to this from YouTube ads, that would be really hard, really, really, really hard. So yeah, I mean, that's the trajectory of the personal brand. This is how it was built. I think it's pretty good model for developers to follow. You can't really go wrong and the skills are permanent. And I always want my skills to be permanent. Like for example, if coding dies a year from now or two years from now, it really wouldn't matter to me that much because I have the skill set of creating content, I have the skill set of copywriting, I have skill set of creating a product, I have a skill set of selling a product, I have the skill set of having happy customers, getting testimonials, creating a team, creating a culture, like all of these skill sets. And so if tomorrow clever programmer dies or you or something happens to YouTube or something happens to say the the market of coding or Python or whatever it may be, if there's a disaster tomorrow or the year after that, or whatever, I have skill sets to then go into something else that I'm excited about tomorrow or go into another business. So you always want to build your skill sets in a way that leaves you permanently flexible and permanently growing. So there you have it. That's how I made my first $1 million in just the last two and a half years. Thank you so much for watching. This is Kazi. If you like the video, just do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content on this channel around becoming, most of the content on this channel is about becoming a developer and how can you become a better developer and how can you make a higher income. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want more stuff like this. I've put together an incredible training for you that'll help you become a six-figure developer. So you can earn the income you want, you can have the time, money, and the freedom, and the impact that you wanna have in this world. The link is below, click on the link, it'll take you to the training, just put in your email, I'll send you this masterclass, it's three-part series, it'll absolutely blow your mind. Completely free. Go there, do it now, and I'll see you on the other side. Yeah, that's it, thank you so much. I love your face, and I'll see you in the next video. One.